With the advancement in technology, we no longer need to visit banks if we want to withdraw money from our account. Even many times we don't even need to use cash due to the introduction of cashless payments methods such as card or UPI methods. On 31st of July 2024, around 300 banks were crippled by a cyber security attack. This was due to a ransomware attack on C-Edge Technologies. In this video, we will talk about this attack, how it impacted general public and banks. Also, we will see in depth the root cause for the attack and how it could have been prevented. So stay tuned till the end of this video. This attack was carried out by a group called Ransom EXX. CH Technologies is a technology service provider to many small banks in India. It provides payment operation services for these banks. This attack has prevented customers of around 300 small sized banks across the country from accessing the payment services like withdrawing cash at the ATMs or using UPI. The National Payment Corporation of India NCPI, had to temporarily ban and isolate the CH technologies from accessing the retail payment system as a precaution. Customers of the banks using CH were not able to access payment system during this period of isolation. CH Technologies was established in 2010 by joint efforts of State Bank of India and TCS. As per the statement of Chairman of National Cooperative Union of India, Mr. Dilip Sanghani, all the online transactions such as RTGS and UPI payments are affected. Money was deducted from the sender's account but does not get credited to the receiver's account. Before we deep dive into all the technical details, let's understand what is a ransomware attack. A ransomware attack is a multi-stage attack. In this, first the attacker breaks into the system using the vulnerabilities present in the system or in the dependent components. Once they are in, they will grab the files, documents and work stuff and lock them up. At this stage, you will not be able to access any of those locked documents. Then comes the ransom demand. They will ask you to pay up or your files stay locked forever. Mostly they want cryptocurrency like Bitcoin as their ransom. Cryptocurrency is the preferred choice for ransom payment in cyber attacks because it allows transactions without revealing the sender's identity. This anonymity makes it harder for the law enforcement to trace the money back to the criminals. It is also decentralized, meaning no central authority controls them. This decentralization prevents the government or banks from freezing or blocking the transactions. Now at this stage, you are left with this tough choice, either pay the ransom, which isn't guaranteed to work, or lose your important data. Ransomware is like digital kidnapping. It holds your files hostage until you meet the attacker's demand. Okay, so if you are still with us, now the things will get real interesting. Because we are going to see how did it happen and how it could have been prevented. The complete root cause analysis. The main vulnerable component in this attack was a Jenkins server. Jenkins is an open source automation server that plays an important role in software development. It helps automate various tasks related to building, testing and deploying software applications. The attacker exploited a vulnerable Jenkins instance. They have used this vulnerability, which is also known as unauthenticated local file inclusion. This is a critical security vulnerability affecting Jenkins 2.441 and earlier versions. It allows attacker to read the file on Jenkins server without authentication. The vulnerability arises from the improper input validation in Jenkins. Input validation is like checking what you have typed, making sure that it is sensible and safe for processing. In this case, someone didn't set up the Jenkins properly. They left a door open and allowed the attacker to sneak in and read the files containing sensitive information. Jenkins didn't validate this input correctly. It trusted the attacker thinking it was a valid user. Now let us see how and what they have done. They began by identifying the vulnerable Jenkins instance and confirming that there is a Git integration present. Using this vulnerability, the attacker gained access to the sensitive files. One critical file they have accessed was credentials.xml. This particular file stores encrypted credentials for various integrations. Then they used Jenkins script console CLI to decrypt the contents of credentials.xml. With this, they had access to GitHub SSH keys and access tokens. With GitHub SSH keys, they can connect to GitHub without supplying any password or username. 
Then they accessed the company's private repositories and stolen the source code and sensitive data present. With that, suddenly payment system across nearly 300 small Indian banks stopped working. Customers were not able to withdraw cash from ATMs or use UPI. The attack did not happen directly, but through a third party. Bronto Technology Solution was the gateway, which is a collaborator with C-Edge, through which this attack happened. The National Payment Corporation of India swiftly stepped in and temporarily isolated the C-Edge technologies from accessing retail payment system to prevent further spread. Although there was no ransom asked by the attacker, so it cannot be marked as a ransomware attack, but still it is a critical data breach as they were able to get hold of SSH keys and using them to get the private repos of the company. Now let's understand how the incidents like this can be avoided. Preventing incidents like this attack involved robust security practices. There should be frequent security assessments of your systems, including third-party components as well. Vulnerability management is very critical. Identify vulnerabilities and address them promptly. Look for the vulnerabilities, not only the direct ones, but also in the third-party components. Keep your software up to date and apply the security patches regularly. You should always follow the principle of least privilege. Grant users only the necessary permissions required to perform their tasks. One more important aspect is educating the employees about cyber security hygiene. Teach them how to recognize phishing emails, suspicious links and risky behavior because most of the attacks happen due to the negligence of internal employees. Regularly back up the critical data. If attacked, you will have a safe copy. Not only this, test your backups to ensure they are functional. Because I have seen many such scenarios where backups were enabled but it was not tested. So when it was required, then the team came to know that it was not functional. So make sure to test your backups to ensure they are functional as well. With everything perfectly planned with safety, always be prepared for the worst. Have a well-defined incident response plan. You should know who to contact, how to contain the attack and how to recover. Remember, cyber security is a continuous effort. Stay vigilant and proactive. So that's it in this video. Do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. If I was able to clearly explain the threat, please give us a like and don't forget to share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, be proactive, be safe.